The choice of your PhD supervisor is so important during your PhD. It will dictate loads of important factors about your PhD, but importantly, how well it will go and how nice the journey will be uh, during the sort of like five to seven plus years of research under their tutelage. Now, a lot of people kind of uh, wonder, should you go for a PhD supervisor who is young, fresh, like a new and up and coming ap academic, or should you go for the more established, older academic as a PhD supervisor? Now, it really depends on the person. So in this video, there will be loads of generalizations that I have witnessed throughout my time in my PhD postdocs and my academic career, but I think it's, uh, it touches on some of the most important things that you should actually consider when choosing a PhD supervisor. And uh, yeah, young, old, let's have a look. The first thing I want to say about all younger academic supervisors are that they tend to be a lot hungrier. So these are people that are just out of a postdoc, just out of many years of postdoc. Maybe they've come from abroad to your institution. They are here to make an impression, no doubt about it. Now, when I've seen this, younger academics coming to a new institution, they hit the ground running. And also they tend to kind of be a little bit more attractive to PhD uh, candidates just because they're they're kind of young, they're hipper, you know, they got a new exciting area of research because the older academics haven't typically been in an institution for a very long time. People know what they're doing, they know what to expect of their research. They very rarely step outside their comfort zone when this new fresh young face comes. It's pretty exciting and they are ready to make an impression. Now that means that I have seen younger academics go above and beyond for their PhD students. They do not want to be their first you know, the first set of PhD students to go through and fail and not get to the end point. So they try very, very hard to get these students to the end point. Um, and they do tend to spend a lot more time with the student than older academics. It could be that they have fewer students or it could be that the older academics just, you know, are a little bit more relaxed in the way that they approach their supervisor role. Um, but no doubt about it, younger academics tend to be hungrier and that can benefit your career because that means more papers, more ch opportunity to go on grant funding, um, and just more contact with that supervisor in general. This video is brought to you by my newsletter. Go check it out at andrewstapleton.com.au forward slash newsletter. I'll put a link in the description. When you sign up, you'll get five emails over about two weeks. Everything from the tools I've used, um, the podcasts I've been on, my TEDx talk, and more. It's exclusive content only available for free on that newsletter. Go check it out. One of the important things about younger academics is they are actually less focused and fixed in a niche. Now, when they come from a different institution, they are early on in their career and they tend to have some things that they do, you know, a field, an area of research that they've become well known for and are sort of uh, building up a fair bit of reputation and momentum in that area. But one thing I have seen is that younger academics tend to take more sideways steps outside of their sort of research field than older academics. Older academics have a system. They have a system about the research they do, the grants they apply for, the people they speak to, the collaborations they have and they keep going through the motions because it is a successful formula they've developed over many years. When you're with a younger academic, you will kind of be part of that formulation of the formula of success. So you can kind of uh, step outside of a niche a little bit more. You can explore new things. So having a younger academic as a supervisor certainly can help because um, you'll be able to form a career alongside theirs much easier than if you go under an older academic. But if you like the comfort of knowing that this older academic has pushed through tons of PhD students, they have a formula, they have you know a system so you know in place so that you can get from one side to the other. They know their research field incredibly well, incredibly deeply. Then uh, you know that can be sort of comforting, especially when you're entering the unknown in your research field. So yes, academic researchers, um, when they are younger, tend to take a few more risks. And if you like the excitement of that, maybe a younger researchers for you. Now, the one thing I've noticed about an older academic is they have been there, they've done that, and they are not stepping aside anytime soon. Now, an older academic has probably, throughout their career, pushed through, let's say, 
50 to 100 PhD students, you know, maybe three a year, five a year, maybe more. Now the thing is, is that they are not in the game of leaving their job and creating a position for you. Um, maybe they have quite an established hierarchy in their lab and, uh, you know, there's a lot of people down the bottom and very few jobs to go up. So you will always be in their shadow. Now the one thing is, is the hierarchy has been set up. Like I have seen older academics Literally, they're in their office. Oh, maybe some posts. It's all right, just the guy to read the uh, electricity. He was a lovely chap. All right, so where was I? You will always be in the shadow of your supervisor. You will be known as a student of that supervisor as opposed to kind of, you know, being able to develop your own trajectory just towards the end of your PhD scholarship. So yes, a younger researcher, you'll be able to develop your careers together, whereas an older um, professor, you are a part of the puzzle piece of their career and uh, you'll always kind of be in their shadow. One thing about older academics are that they have got better connections and better collaborations. Now this can mean a number of things for your PhD. Firstly, you have the opportunity to also collaborate with another team. You can go abroad. One of my supervisors went on a sabbatical during my PhD and I went to Durham. I flew from Australia to Durham to hang out with her for a couple of weeks, go to a, um, go to a conference, hang out, go to their labs. You know, like it was a nice, fun, different experience for my PhD. A younger supervisor doesn't necessarily have those connections or certainly not deep enough connections to be able to kind of like properly go and spend a lot of time in other people's labs. That said, of course, they could also offer that. But I think it's an important thing about that sort of like PhD experience, which supervisors, young or old, are going to give you the richest experience. I really liked um, going up to different universities during any of my PhD postdoc times. Um, I went to UQ, I went to the UK, um, I went to different institutions within Adelaide. All of those places are excellent. So yes, younger academics tend to not have that same level of connection and collaboration as older academics. Um, but if you like the kind of formation stage and you want the excitement of sort of building up that uh, connection and collaboration early on, maybe younger is better for you. All right then, next thing. Older people tend to have a much better consistency of money. They know the game. The game in academia is survival. The way you survive in academia is you apply for as many grants as humanly possible, as quickly as possible, so that you end up with just like a, a hit rate. It may be a 10% hit rate, which means that every 10 you get one. It may be better. They may have sort of like been able to craft the perfect grant application. They may be able to have convinced people at a certain level of government or um, somewhere else that they are the people to give the money to. All of that uh, comes with time, with persistence, and older academics invariably have a much better sort of consistency of money. They also are on much bigger grants, which means that the money that they get tends to be bigger and it lasts for much longer. Younger academics, when they first start out, they do apply for loads of grants, but they don't have that success hit rate like older academics. And certainly the pot of money they get maybe is a little bit more uh, sort of like uh, inconsistent, some big ones, some little ones. Um, but you know, they are hungry. They are re willing and ready to go out and keep on applying for grant money and it is the game. The game is apply for as many as possible and eventually you will win one or two of them or short ones or big ones or whatever. Collaborations also go a really long way. If you can collaborate with someone else to say yes, I will go on your grant, you can go on my grant, all of that kind of fits together. So there's no doubt that I have seen older academics with much bigger pots of money that last for much longer and they are part of bigger sort of uh, collaboration cohorts. They are are part of, uh, what is it called, the ARC, uh, they are part of a big institute that gets money and they get some of that money because they lend their name to the success of these big collaborations. Um, and all of that means more stability during your PhD and less worry about, you know, the lab all of a sudden not having money or your supervisor having to go to another institution to sort of like fill in the gaps. All right. Next one is actually probably the most important. 
One thing I've seen about younger academics is they have a much better understanding of the new academic game. Now, older academics, you know, they can rest on their laurels a little bit. They can sit there and go, well, you know, I've got the connections, collaborations, money. Maybe I'll retire soon. I heard of that a lot from old academics. They never retire. Uh, maybe I'll retire soon. Oh, look, some more money. I guess I'll stay around. Um, whereas younger academics understand the new game. The, the, the game has evolved a little bit. Now, it's much more about promotion. It's much more about public communication. It's much more about that personal branding thing. I have seen some younger academics do that with incredible skill and accuracy and kind of like the plan to build a brand alongside their science, which means that when they go up for grants, when they go up for just kind of uh, awards, like one person I know in particular just gets award after award after award and doesn't necessarily come with money. But what they're doing is building up that personal brand, something that older academic probably doesn't care for, but also doesn't need to do. In today's fast moving online social media driven world, these new academics that are coming up and popping up into the uh, the ecosystem of academia in the ivory towers, they're bringing with it a sort of fresh energy for engaging in new and exciting ways. They're putting out, um, you know, teaser trailers about their work. They're participating in TV shows. They're giving public talks much more. All of that is uh, kind of kind of exciting. And so I think for a younger um, academic with these kind of uh, desires to be successful, they do have to embrace this new game. And uh, being part of that, I think, build your skills. It allows you to see what the new game is and not just, you know, being ignored, nor ignore all this sort of like fancy promotion stuff from the older um, academics. So yes, younger academics, they understand the new game much better. And I think it will be good to kind of like be wrapped up in that and understand that science is no longer just about do or research in general is no longer just about publishing papers. It's about promotion. It's about blowing your own whistle. It's no longer sort of uh, publish or perish. There's mixed into it visible or vanish. So there we have it. There's everything you need to know about young versus old PhD supervisors. Now, clearly there were a huge range of generalizations, but overall, what you should really be focusing on is, is the person, young, old, or otherwise, are they committed to you? Go check out my other video where I talk about how to choose a PhD supervisor. That is invaluable in the early stages of your PhD and academic career. Go check it out. I'll put a link here or here, wherever it goes. And go check out academiainsider.com. That's my website. It started this year where I've got my ebook, the Ultimate Academic Writing Toolkit, as well as my Insider Forum. And I'll see you in the next video.